thank you very much for having us, and um, I've enjoyed doing uh, covering taxes committee for all these years. And um, I wanted to ask you, with Republicans in control of the House, this is your second go around as chair of the House Taxes Committee, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. And you're the only committee I've heard that has the ability to raise revenue as well as spend it. Can you explain the function of the tax committee? Well, there are many committees uh, in the House. The finance committees, of course, can all uh, spend money, they appropriate money. Uh, the tax committee is unique in that it's the only committee that can raise the money. Mm -hmm. So we're the only co committee that can raise money. Uh, and so uh, that gives uh, a lot of people have a little more interest uh, in the tax committee because of that, that function right there. So uh, it's, it's a great committee. I chaired the committee in 2011 and 2012 when we had a $6.2 billion shortfall. Uh, so uh, with a surplus right now, it's, it's a much different uh, uh, committee than what we had four years ago. Right. I remember <coughs> so well that at that time it was trying to figure out where you could save money and where you could cut, and now it, it just seems like everybody's coming in looking for a break. Well, uh, since the targets have been announced, since they were announced mm -hmm. yesterday and the tax committee has a $2 billion target, uh, for tax relief. Uh, I have a whole lot of new friends right now. Now when my tax bill comes out, I'll be working on it all over the break. Uh, when that tax bill comes out, I might lose a few friends. Yeah, I was but, I was going to actually ask you about that, that target. Um, so actually, from what I understand, and if you can explain this, the, your, your budget, your target in total is like $5.8 billion. But what you're saying is that two billion of that will be used for actual tax relief. That should be the tax relief. See, okay. the, as we said earlier, the tax committee has two uh, functions. They have they have a spending side, mm -hmm. which is uh, like for local government aids, county program aid, things like that. Okay. Then we have the side uh, on the other side where we're going to be able to give tax relief to Minnesotans. Okay. Uh, we're we're really going to focus on middle class uh, family tax relief. And what does that mean? Uh, it means in that uh, very various areas where we can uh, reduce. The tax burden on middle-class Minnesotans, uh, we will, for example, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, phasing out the Social Security tax on mm -hmm. senior citizens. Now, no decision has been made yet, but that would be an example. Or uh, to encourage veterans to, uh, military veterans to retire in Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at phasing out uh, their retirement pay as it is in most states. See, these, yep. uh, most states do not tax Social Security benefits. They do not tax um, they do not tax military benefits. Another example would be there's a bill going through right now for 529 plans. There, mm -hmm. There's bills that will be heard this afternoon, a couple of bills I have to give some relief to college students and their student loans. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that we can do, uh, whether it be property tax relief, the commercial industrial, whether it be uh, uh, Representative Earhart's bill, a uh, DFL for me dying it to, uh, to uh, conform with the feds on the estate tax. A lot of good ideas out there. now. This is my spreadsheet on the bills we have in the committee, uh, the ones that we've heard, the ones we haven't heard. And speaking of your spreadsheet, I understand um, last week I think you said you have seven bi or seven billion dollars worth of ideas have come through that committee. Actually, I think it's up closer to nine billion. So, and we have two billion to work with. So, what's um, your process in whittling this down? Well, we take the sharpened pencil. We can't put it over here. <laughs> we, we get her nice and sharp and we start going through and we add some things that we think we'd want to do. And of course, when, when I shape the tax bill, it has to be a bill that I can give the votes to pass. Right. Uh, I've learned how to count very well as tax chairman. I've learned to count uh, to 68 uh, to get a bill passed. Then you have to be able to count to uh, six uh, for the tax conference committee to get mm -hmm. there. And of course, very importantly, you have to count to one uh, to get the governor's signature. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'm very good at counting. I know these numbers, uh, and we'll get to those numbers. Uh, and my goal is to put a tax bill together that the governor can sign. It seems like a bill can live or die depending upon the whim of the tax chair. I wouldn't say whim. I don't think Chair Lincheski, when she was chair, she didn't go by a whim. Uh, we go by sound logic and, and uh, after listening to testimony to, to see how we put this bill together. Uh, and, you know, yes, I'll, I'll be putting proposals together. I'll uh, be including my Vice Chair Draskowski, okay. uh, committee members, uh, and we will, uh, from the Republican side, present it. Uh, and then the DFL will have then plenty of opportunity to put amendments on what they think they want to do. So I, I have to assume it's based on the priorities of the caucus as well then as you're crafting this document. Speaker Dowd, he, he's a great speaker. Speaker Dowd gives his chairs a lot of latitude. Okay. 
uh, and the budget target numbers and Chair Knobloch did a great job uh, putting targets together. Uh, and so we are given the number that we are given. Uh, right. And then we have pretty free latitude to go and, to go and put our tax bills together, or K-12 education for Chair Moon or whoever. Uh, but we also have to always remember that, that we have to be able to count. And we have to be able to get the votes to get the tax bill passed. Yeah, and the last time you crafted a tax bill was in 2011, and you turned it your smoking hot tax smoking bill. Smoking hot tax bill. But Governor Dayton didn't quite agree with you, and it didn't take him too long before he vetoed it. And then he turned right around and vetoed a slimmed down version of that bill. So my question is, is you said that you want to craft a tax bill. I've heard you say this numerous times. You want to craft a tax bill that's going to get passed. How are you going to do that? What's going to be in it that's going to make it appeal to your friends across the street, the Senate, and the governor? Well, this is the beginning of a process. This isn't done overnight. I, I understand that this tax bill that I put forward will not at 100% be passed and signed mm -hmm. in law. I understand that. But we have to put a bill together what the House priorities are. We'll get it passed off the House floor. We'll go to the conference committee, and I'll be spending many, many hours with Senator Rod Scoy, uh, and we'll be going through line by line of the House mm -hmm. proposal or the House tax bill, the Senate tax bill, uh, and we'll put a, a bill together. Now, I'm certainly hoping, and it's been a concern that I've had, that uh, you know the governor shut state government down in 2011. Right. Uh, clearly, I mean, I offered him in May the largest had the smoking hot tax bill was the largest tax bill in state history. Uh, at the time, shame on me. I mean, but that was my bill. I was responsible for it. I uh, acted in good faith. One of the governors right. signed the bill. Uh, the governor decided to veto it. Uh, then we went into the rest of May and June and. The governor shut the state down uh, for a period of time, about three weeks. Some fear this is deja vu, that the only way this is going to get resolved is through a special session and well, the uh, government shut down. I hope not. I hope it doesn't come out. That'll be up to the governor. Uh, we'll give a very reasoned bill to the governor. Uh, mm -hmm. And if he decides to shut it again uh, down again like he did in 2011, that's up to him. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one difference is the makeup of the legislature. The, the Democrats in the Senate are all up on the ballot next year. so. When you're facing the voters, you're on the ballot, you think a little more clear uh, than uh, what happened back then. But uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a different makeup. Uh, so many people's proposals are in your hands. I, I mean, I just see that you're a nice guy, but <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not that nice. But don't you feel sometimes like you're King David sitting there with your people? With, with, with the David's dollars? Yeah. Yeah, and, with the David. No. And I'm, I'm going to listen to my no. subjects? No. I, I'm no. certainly not a king. I wouldn't pretend to be when I played yeah. one once on TV, but, oh. but uh, I, I'm not. Uh, and I understand that. You become very humble yeah. uh, when you realize that you have a Senate, a great counterparts on the Senate to work okay. with uh, Senator Scoy and rest. I have a tremendous amount of respect yeah. for them. Uh, and ultimately, the majority leader over there, Bach, and some decisions will go to uh, to majority leader Bach and Speaker Doubt. And I have great confidence that they'll be able to work together. So, I'm hoping we don't have the repeats. Mm -hmm. I will give every effort not to do that again. I think when you see the tax bill, you'll see that it's a very non-political bill in that you're going to have DFL bills okay. included. You're going to have some of the governor's proposals included. I like the child care tax credit for one example. And he okay. also does some things with. Uh, the family working credit between Wisconsin and Minnesota, he does some things on the estate tax that are very, very good mm -hmm. uh, and to clear up some things there. Uh, and also, of course, uh, the first bill uh, that uh, will certainly be in the omnibus tax bill will be a Representative Rosenthal bill, if I could find it here, on the, that, on the bullion, because this is my 11th year as tax chair, or as a chairman of a committee. Okay. And it's always been my rule to always hear a, a bill from the party opposite first, yes. and not one that we can hear and kill, but one that we can hear and pass. So if you look back at the various bills that we've heard, they were not to play games with, they were to get into law. Uh, and so that's been a tradition of my committee, six years as commerce, two years of ag, and now my third year as, uh, as tax chair. Uh, and I think it sets a good tone for the committee that your bills are going to be heard, they're going to be considered. If they're good ideas, we'll give them a, a good fair hearing and a good look. Can you also tell me some of the interesting proposals that have come forward in committee this year that you kind of go, wow, where did that come from? Well, not so much, wow, where did that come from, but I think some very good policy. For example, uh, former Chair Earhart's bill on the conforming the estate tax. Okay. I mean, that, that's a great bill. Mm -hmm. uh, Seltzer's bill, I believe, is on the gift tax. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there, there's some good things coming in from both parties. Now, 
That being said, we're not going to be able to do everything. Uh, for example, if we just got rid of the CI, that's 1.7 billion. I have two. Well, that kind that's of a a CI. commercial industrial. Ah, if we get that's right. a lot of a lot of small business in outstate Minnesota. Their, their property taxes are going up, and yeah. part of it's the commercial industrial, which is collected by the county, given to the state. Mm -hmm. Now, in my in my mind, property taxes should be for local services. So, the school districts, the cities, the counties, the townships, when they collect money, it should be for them. But yet, with a commercial industrial tax, they have to send that into the state. Uh, that's something that we've been looking and getting rid of for many years, just haven't had the money to do it before. Cabin owners, too, aren't they including that? Cabin owners, it depends yeah. on how it's written. Cabin owners uh, have some real concerns on the statewide property tax yeah. uh, for cabin owners. So, uh, you know, and, and uh, in, in my perfect world, uh, I'd get rid of the fourth tier uh, that was put in 2013. Mm -hmm. I think that's very bad tax policy. Uh, and there are those that are saying, well, unless you do that, you're not serious. That's kind of what Sherilyn Chesky right, was saying last right. night. Well, that's not the case at all. Yeah. Uh, it, it's bad tax policy, but we have some bad tax policy out yeah. there. What I want to do is craft a bill, you know, and, and so why would I go to the governor getting rid of his, what he considers, I think, his premier accomplishment, the fourth income tax tier? Why would I eliminate that mm -hmm. when I know he's not going to sign it? Okay. I want, I'd like to kind of skip the political part and get to the policy part right away. And I understand how this place works. I understand that uh, some chairs need to do that. You know, I'm too old for that. Uh, let, let's get cut to the chase and let's get a bill put together the governor can sign. When do you think you're going to have your bill ready? I'd say uh, second to third week in April. So now I'd like to close out with what's going to be the tag name of this bill? I mean, you had the smoking hot tax bill. Is this going to be some version of the don't stop believing? The tax bill's name for 2015, the House Republican tax bill is don't stop believing. That's what I Song thought. Song by Journey. Don't stop That's believing. That's what I thought. Because hope is here. Hope is hope here. Hope is here. We have hope for the taxpayers of Minnesota that they're going to be able to keep more of their hard earned money. The middle class is going to come out better. Government cannot continue to grow faster than middle class pocketbooks. And that's what the tax bill will show. Wow. Don't stop believing. Is there anything you'd like to, you know, to, to convey to people about the tax committee? And, um, you know, what your experience has been on it. Why do you like to, I mean, you told me you like to be on the tax committee. I, I love serving on the tax committee. It's a little more fun as chair than as, as lead Republican, yeah. I'll say. But, you know, the, the tax committee has quite a history of some very, uh, very good chairs. Uh, chair Lynn Chesky, uh, mm -hmm. excellent chair of the tax committee over the years. Uh, you go back to, uh, uh, well, Tom Bach was over in the Senate, but, but we've had some really good tax chairs, so whether it be Ann Rest in the House, and now she works with Senator Skoy. Um, and, and, you know, in the past you've had the, you know, hyped up tax committee conference committees where it's uh, the thrill in Manila, the rumble in the rotunda, and, and all these different names that way. Uh, well, uh, if you come to my tax conference committees, you better bring a cup of coffee and some no-dos uh, because we go line by line. We will get into that bill, uh, and I'm not looking uh, for a big standoff with the Senate. I'm looking on. I want to see. You know, what are your ideas? What did the House come up with? What can we agree on? What can we put together to get a tax bill signed by the governor? Uh, that's my goal. Now there'll be some bumps along the way. I, I understand how this place works, but uh, but uh, let, let's let's get our pencil sharp and let's go through the tax bill and see what we can put together. Minnesotans want property tax relief. Minis middle income Minnesotans need property, need tax relief mm -hmm. uh, in general. Uh, and that's what I want this tax bill to show. Okay. And it, it'll be a very bipartisan bill. You're going to have governor's proposals. You're going to have DFL proposals. You're going to have Republican proposals. Uh, these are all, you know, well thought out. They've all had full hearings. Uh, and so uh, we'll go forward, I think, with a very serious proposition that I hope the Senate will... Uh, uh, take a good look at it, and, and when the Senate comes out uh, with their tax bill, I'll be reading that line by line. And, and I'm not looking for things that we can argue about or what we want to get rid of. I'm going to be looking for things where, yeah, we can do that. That's a good idea because don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing.